Hey everyone, Joey here, and today I want to do a video all about streaming, the different ways that you can stream to your devices, the different apps available to you, the different devices available to you, all that sort of thing, all today. This is going to be a bird's eye view of streaming as a whole, and so we won't get too in the weeds with really anything, it's meant to be a more introductory beginner's guide to everything that you can do. So right off the bat, we have to classify the different streaming options because there is local streaming and then there is remote streaming. And we'll talk about remote in a little bit. Now, local streaming is where you would use something like Moonlight or Artemis on your device and you would stream from your actual gaming PC on your own network using software like Sunshine or Apollo. Now, you've likely seen my video all on that subject and how to set it all up. This is by far the best setup that you can have as it's free, you use your own PC, you own your own network, and the latency is the best because it is all on your own local network. On top of that, the speed from your internet service provider does not matter at all for this. It doesn't matter if you have cable internet, it doesn't matter if you have fiber internet, doesn't matter if it's a thousand megabytes down, doesn't matter if it's 25 megabytes down. None of that matters. You are only using your internal network to stream. So what matters is your graphics card. What matters is your router and how good that is, or your access points if you're using those, and all of that. You would want your PC to be hardwired Ethernet for the best results here, but the streamed to device, like an Odin 2 portal or a Windows device, whatever it is, those can be wireless. But obviously, if they're all hardwired, you would get the best, best results. So I've talked about this in many, many videos, but this is personally how I play my games. I have my gaming PC right over there. I have my AYN Odin 2 portal, and I'm on my couch usually, which is downstairs, and I just stream everything from my gaming PC to my portal, 1080p, 120 hertz, max settings because I have a 5070 Ti, and I enjoy gaming that way. Now, not to confuse you at all, but you can actually use those same programs to stream remotely as well. So your own PC remotely to anywhere in the world on any device. With this setup, your internet service provider speeds absolutely do matter now. Namely, your upload speed at your house. And so you would want a fiber connection for this to work well. The download speed of wherever your device is in the world is what will matter there for the device that you're streaming to. Apollo and Artemis are a fantastic combination and they are the best streaming options for pretty much anybody with a good PC and good internet or good hardware. As far as alternatives go to local streaming, Parsec is another option. And generally, but this isn't always correct, but generally, Parsec is a better alternative if you are looking for a full remote desktop type scenario with gaming included, as opposed to something like Moonlight and Artemis, where they are more focused on gaming than the desktop solution. Then we have another option that a lot of people are familiar with, and it is the Steam Link, which is Steam's own in-home streaming option that can stream both locally and remotely. Steam Link is a great option for many people that just want to stream and go. And they don't care about the best experience for latency. They don't care about the best experience for image quality and so on. But it is really kind of obsolete at this point, especially by Artemis and Apollo. And how much better both of those are for both local and remote streaming. And while many will say that they have a good experience with Steam Link, and I don't doubt them, it can be a lot better. There's a lot missing there. Steam Link is just the beginner easy option because you can just click a button and it works, but you can make it a lot better. Now, as far as the most interesting local streaming option, Duo is the most unique. You can use Duo for scenarios where you want to use your desktop PC while streaming to other devices in your network. So I'm imagining a family where you want to play on that PC, but you're sibling or wife or whoever is wants to stream as well from that PC on whatever device they're using. So using Apollo and Artemis, you wouldn't be able to do this. You can't have somebody using the computer as you are streaming. But with Duo, you can set up as many instances as you want. So you can have yourself just playing on that computer, have many people in your house just streaming from that PC. And as long as your graphics card can handle all of those different streams, you're pretty much set up. 
Duo is basically the answer to anybody that wants multi-seat capabilities, which is what that's called. So you can use the PC and you can stream to devices without an issue. Now the catch here is you do need to pay $10 as a one-time fee to the developer for the actual real features to use Duo, but that's kind of a small price to pay for what this can achieve. So yeah, it's a good price for what you're getting. Now to kind of tie everything back up when it comes to local streaming, which is what we were focusing on right now, Artemis and Apollo is gonna be your best options. Artemis on your device, which is pretty much any Android device as of right now, Apollo on your gaming computer, I have a whole video to show you how to set all of that up. And as of right now, you are using Moonlight with Apollo. So Apollo again on your gaming computer, Moonlight on Windows devices, Linux devices, that sort of thing. That is the connection. That is the best local streaming option, which again, we talked about earlier, can also be remote streaming, but it's a bit different than the remote streaming that we're gonna talk about in a second. So as far as remote streaming goes, in the definition that we're talking about today, it is services that don't require you to have any hardware at all on your end. So GeForce Now is the most popular example, of course. You pay a monthly fee to NVIDIA's GeForce Now, and you can stream games that you own on Steam, Epic, Microsoft Store, and so on. And all of this is being streamed from NVIDIA's servers, their whole setup that they have for game servers. And so you are relying on their network speeds you're relying on your own internet service provider speeds, and you are paying a subscription fee to not have a, your own gaming PC, for example. So all of this is offsite. You have a fully remote streaming service. There are a few services like this that compete with NVIDIA's GeForce Now. Boosteroid is an option, for example. Boosteroid generally has a larger catalog of games than GeForce Now, but GeForce Now has the best latency and image quality of any of the remote streaming options. Now, another option is a service called Shadow PC. This is the most expensive option, but instead of a streaming service like GeForce Now, with Shadow PC, you are streaming an entire PC that is entirely your own. So you are effectively renting a PC somewhere in the world, and they have optimized the connection for streaming to and from it. Now, out of all of these options, GeForce Now is the king of remote streaming options. Out of every service that I have personally tried, it has the best latency, it has the best image quality, it has the best pricing for value and everything. Remote streaming would be the best option, best suited to those of you that don't have a gaming PC, or maybe not a powerful enough one, and you don't plan on purchasing one, or maybe you don't have the room for it, and you just wanna pay a subscription to get all of the games that you own on Steam and elsewhere and play them remotely. Now, just a reminder, when we are saying remotely here, it refers to the fact that the streaming service is remotely. You can do all of that from in your house. So I am here at home. I could load up GeForce Now and stream all those games. Remotely is referring to the service that is remotely away from us. It is not local because you can't use it outside of using the internet. Lastly, we have console streaming. What's the best for PlayStation 5? What is the best for the Xbox consoles. Let's talk PlayStation first. On Android and PC, PlayStation has an official remote play application. And on Android, it is right off of the Google Play Store and it is off their website for PC. The problem is that it only works with official Sony controllers or the controllers that we have from third parties that can spoof a DualSense controller. But there's not that many of those. You are also severely limited settings-wise in that app. You can't really customize much for quality, remapping buttons, and so on. It is a pretty stilted experience, but it is the easiest to get set up and working right out of the box, and it connects instantly. This is a very similar experience to Steam Link from earlier. It is the easiest and quickest and best beginner option, but that doesn't mean it's the best. The alternative on Android and PC is a $7 paid app called PX Play. This app is an absolute godsend. It takes a bit more work to connect the app to your PS5, but once you do, you can customize the resolution of your playback, the bitrate, the button mappings, vibrations. You can use any controller in the world or any handheld to stream your PS5 games. And all of this works without a PS Plus subscription. However, the app does not support PS Plus streaming. 
So currently you can only do that on the PC using PlayStation's official app. There's nothing on Android yet. Now, PlayStation Plus Streaming is their Xbox Cloud Gaming competitor service. So it is all the games that they are offering to you through that service, not the games that are on your actual console, but it's the ones that you can stream from PlayStation servers. But if you have a PlayStation 5 in your house and you want to stream the games from your PS5 to an AYN Odin 2 portal or whatever device in your house, then PX Play is what you want. And you can do that locally and you can also do that out in the world as well. It will stream outside of your network. But again, it goes back to your internet service providers. You are probably going to need a fiber connection for that and really good upload speeds and really good download speeds wherever you are in the world to do that. The best part about PX Play is that it turns any device you want into a PlayStation Portal. It is why when the PlayStation Portal came out, a lot of us were like, well, I could do that on any device for $7. So you get that experience on any device. It is a better experience because you can adjust the bit rate, you can adjust the resolution, you can adjust the button mappings, all of that fun stuff. So you have all of that on any device. Lastly, we have Xbox. Xbox has their own official cloud gaming service. It is actually built right into their website. And as long as you use a browser that supports it on any operating system, you can simply just pull it up on any device, log in and start playing. Of course, you need to be paying for the Xbox Game Pass service. And I think it's ultimate at this point. Their membership thing is actually pretty confusing. So what's the issue? Well, the experience kind of sucks. It used to be baked into their app, at least on Android, and it still is on PC at least, but using a web browser to play your games isn't the best experience. The other issue is that if you have Xbox 360 games locally, you can't stream those. So you can't stream from your Xbox One S, Xbox Series S, to any of your other devices and play Xbox 360 games like what I want to do with Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon. I want to play those, but you can't do that. So what's the best option? And again, it is a seven US dollar option called XB Play for both local and remote streaming. And it is also available on PC and Android. XB Play is on pretty much everything. It has 1080p support. It supports a ton of controllers. It has the ability to adjust the picture for sharper images. You can play backwards compatible titles from the Xbox 360, as long as you have that hardware. You can, of course, play cloud streaming like the official website and so much more. Long story short, you really shouldn't be using anything besides XB Play to stream your Xbox games on any device. Now, like PlayStation, this also does work remotely, not just locally. So you have all of the best benefits of everything. You can stream your own Xbox console locally or remotely, including Xbox 360 titles from that console or you can stream remotely using their Xbox Cloud Gaming Catalog, either at home or on the go. Okay, so I want to put in a very quick section here at the end as far as the best devices to stream to, because we talked about every other scenario and all of the other ones are gonna matter really depending on your computer, your Xbox, all that sort of thing. But the one thing that you are in charge of is what handheld or device can you buy that you can stream to? So for an actual handheld, the AYN Odin 2 Portal is my favorite device. It has full Wi-Fi 7 support, an OLED panel, 1080p, 120 hertz refresh rate, and it is just a perfect fit overall for a streaming device. This will run you about 329 US dollars, but it is the best option that you can buy. The Logitech G Cloud, if you can find it at a good price, which is usually around 150 or so US dollars now, is a fantastic option too, and it is cheaper. Now for a stay-at-home device, the Xbox Series S is a fantastic option for streaming as a client. Given that it is easily hackable now, and it will be free in the next few weeks, you can install Moonlight onto it and you would have a very good local streaming option and a remote streaming option. Otherwise, pretty much any Windows mini PC or PC would be good as a stay-at-home option, giving you full compatibility to do any streaming and Windows latency is better than Linux's when it comes to streaming. But honestly, those are just the best options according to me. There's no reason to be picky about any of this. 
Windows PCs, Windows PC handhelds, mini PCs, Android devices, as long as it is a Snapdragon processor, you want to avoid MediaTek processors. The decoding latency and all of that is not good. It can't compare. So try and stick to a Snapdragon if you can. Otherwise, I've heard good things about Apple TVs. I've heard good things about Apple iPads, all of that. There is a wide range of devices. It's just my two favorites to give to you is an OD2 portal for a handheld and an Xbox Series S for an actual stay at home, just plop it down somewhere and play. Let me sort of wrap things up here. Apollo and Artemis are the kings of local streaming. And if you have a good PC with a good graphics card, as well as a good router or access point, it will be the best option to you for local and remote streaming. And it should be your first option to try because it doesn't cost you anything. Second, in my opinion, is GeForce Now. Sure, it has a limited catalog of games and you have to own those games for it to work, but it has the best latency, it has the best image quality, and it is the best of the remote streaming options. This should be your choice if you have no PC at all and you don't plan on buying one. Then we have the console streaming options, which there's two, PX Play and XB Play, depending on PlayStation or Xbox. The quality of these streams are a cut below Apollo and Artemis and GeForce Now, but you can't use any of those other services for consoles. So you're kind of stuck with what you get, but those are the best options for consoles. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. That is a quick overview of the streaming options available to you, especially if you own a handheld and all of the streaming options available to you from a bird's eye view, I guess. Otherwise, enjoy some streaming. It's the best way to play your games and not have to worry too much about hardware. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about streaming. Support me through YouTube membership if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.